What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. So we're coming in at day 27 of hashtag 30 days of Flutter and in this video we're going to be covering caching network images. So in the last video we went over how to actually get the URL for our image from Amplify Storage and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to not only display that image but we're also going to cache the image its URL and then we're also going to be saving um, our profile as well because we haven't been able to save our profile changes. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. As you can see, so as you can see, uh, picking up where we left off, we are currently getting our URL for our file when we pass in our avatar key and then we're able to uh, trigger an event which is going to cause our view to render and it's going to show our, in, our profile. And let me show you that real quick. And bam, you can see yours truly right here like oh all right so now what we want to do is we want to just simply cache this image and its url because every time we go out and get this url we could potentially be getting a different url so what we want to do is we want to store this image or we want to store this url in a cache so that it's more efficient when we look it up so what we can do is we could create a new file called image cache All right, so we have our image URL cache, and this is going to be responsible for hanging on to each of the URLs that are provided whenever we pass in a key to amplify storage and get that URL back. We want to hang on to each of those URLs, especially when we're going to be working with the posts in the social media feed. We want to hang on to those URLs so it's much easier to get them back. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're only ever able to work with one instance of an image URL cache so that we don't have multiple caches and we, we could just simply grab from the same one every single time. So with these three lines of code, we're able to make sure that we only ever have one image URL cache instance. This is our private constructor. This is the actual instance of that private or of our image URL cache and it's created using the private constructor. And then since we only want to be able to get this value and not actually set this value, we have this computed property. So instance is going to actually get the instance. So now we need to create a map. The map is going to have a key, which is going to be the image key and a value, which is going to be the image URL. We need to be able to check that map and see if our value or our URL is in that map. And if it is, then we return that value. If it's not, then we need to download the actual URL for that key. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here we added the URL cache, which is a map of string and string, right? The key and the URL. And then we have this function, which is going to return a future string. So that means that it's going to be an asynchronous function. So we pass in the image key. It's going to tr attempt and get the value from our URL cache and set that to URL. Now, if URL is null, then we will go through this logic where we're actually getting the URL from Amplify Storage, and then we're setting that URL in the URL cache so that it's there next time we try to look it up. And if we do run into an error, then we'll just simply print it for now. And then um, at the end of that, we will essentially be returning that URL, whether it was from the URL cache or we just downloaded it. Now that we have our URL cached, let's go ahead and implement it back in our profile block back over here in the constructor. And instead of grabbing uh, the URL from the repo, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the URL from the image cache. And there we go. So now we have the image URL cache. We are getting the URL by passing in the user.avatar key. Then once we get that URL back, we will provide the image path with a URL. And that should continue to trigger our app to show our profile view. So let's go ahead and test this out and run the app. All right, here it goes. Does it happen? Does it work? 
Does it work? Oh, and it works. I guess we know what we're doing. All right, looking really, really snazzy, if you ask me. All right, so that's pretty good. But now what we also want to do is we want to cache the actual image itself. And we can do that use, using um, a different library called cache network image. So let's head over to that pubspec.yaml. And that's going to be right up here, pubspec.yaml. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in our library. All right, so we have our cache network image in place. Now we need to head back over to our profile view. And what we want to do is we want to swap out our avatar. We're going to take out this circle avatar and um, we are going to replace it with our cache network image. So let's go ahead and remove this bad boy and pop in our cached network image like so. And then we need to pass it a URL. So that'll be state.avatarpath like so. We save it and let's go ahead and restart the app again. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Does it work? Yes or no? Let's find out together. So here we go. All right, it's loading and it blows up our entire UI. Well, that's because we don't have it actually contained to a specific size. We also don't have a shape. So what I'm actually going to do is let's, well, you know what we can actually do is instead of our our switch statement or our ternary operation determining whether we should show a container or a circular avatar view or this cache network view, what we could do is we could return the container instead, right? We'll return this container. And then in regards to the child, what we'll do is we'll use our ternary operation right here. If the avatar path is equal to null, that is when we're going to show our icon. However, if we have an avatar path, that's when we're going to show our cached network image, right? Oops. Let's do this. Oops. I think I deleted it. So let me copy it again and we'll just put it right here. There we go. So now, so now I think that this actually might work if we just, you know, do all the modifications that are required and it's looking pretty snazzy. I save it. Let's take a look at it with the hot reload, getting closer, getting closer. What we want to do is we also want to make sure that our um, box is going to do a cover, not just going to be having this funkiness going on. All right. So we have it set to box fit cover like so we save it. Let's take a look at it looking square it's the right size but it's not actually being clipped all right so one thing that we can do is we can wrap this in a clip rect so let's do that all right so we have a clipped r rect and let's see if that helped us out at all and there we go so now we have our avatar image looking pretty snazzy. We have it in a circle. It's being cached. Everything is all gravy. Next, what I want to do is I want to add in the ability to save in something right here. So whenever we say something and we save the changes, it should actually kick off the saving because we have our images cached. We're pretty much done with that, but we haven't actually saved our, our given the ability to save our profile, right? So we need to do that. Now let's go down over to our, um, our input for the description. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that it is updating on changed. So as you can see, we have our profile block being accessed. We're changing the value. And then whenever we hit the save profile changes button, nothing is happening when we do the unpressed. And what we want to do is just simply update that. So, First, we need to emit the event that is going to save those changes. All right, and as you can see here, we are now going to access our profile block and then add the save profile changes event. Let's go back over to our profile block. Let's take a look at that logic here. So when we hit the save profile changes, we need to handle that those changes and we haven't implemented that yet. So now let's go ahead and 
send that information to our data store, uh, our data service. So the changes that we made are we are going to yield out a form submitting status as soon as we hit that save button. Then we're going to get a copy of our user and we're going to update it to the, um, the user description. So we're going to update the user description right here. We're going to pass that through to our data repo using the update user function that we created in one of our previous videos. And then uh, we will either get a success, in which case we'll yield out that success state. It, or if not, then we will yield out a state that has a form status of failed. And we'll pass that error down. So that is going to be handled right there. If we go back over to the profile view, what we want to do is we want to go all the way up to the top. And we want to make sure that we have a block listener that is going to check for that failed form submission status. So we already have it checking to see if the source action sheet is visible, but we also want to check if we failed and that will allow us to display an error message. All right. So as you can see here, we have our form status, which we're accessing from our state. And then if the form status is a submission failed, then we want to do something. So the reason why we're doing it like this is because now we have form status and it should have an exception which we can pass and actually use to display a, uh, a message. Now we've done this in the past where we've gotten an error and we displayed it to the user back in auth and we can see this in our login view. So I think if we go all the way to the bottom, I think we have a show snack bar, which we can see right here. And we can just simply copy this uh, this same um, logic right here to show the snack bar. And if we take a look all the way at the top, I believe we have it being displayed after there's some type of listener. So as you can see, we have a form status. We get that form status. We simply pass the form status exception as a string to our snack bar and everything seems to work. So let's go back over to our profile view, do the same exact thing, paste it in right here. Um, this is actually a function, so we want to want to paste it down here like that, and then we want to use it. So let's go back up and we'll do a show. And this is a private function, so show snack bar. And then the context we are getting from right here, the message will be our form status dot exception to string like so. So if the user fails to submit their form, then they will see that. We also want to make sure that our button is going to display a circular progress indicator whenever we hit save so that we're not going to be able to con continuously hit save and potentially like save multiple times um, when that's like not needed. So on our save profile changes button, what we're going to do is we're going to check the state. We're going to make sure that the form status is not equal to submission or submitting. And as long as it's not equal to submitting, then we can show our elevated button. All right, there we go. So with that small change, now we're checking the form status. Is it form submitting? If it is, then we'll show circular progress indicator. If not, then we'll show this elevated button, which they can tap and attempt to save their changes again. So I think that should be good enough to get us going. So now whenever we uh, whenever we type something in, say, hey, um, a sexy coder, like so, we can save our changes. We saw it flash, it flickered. And the reason why it flickered is because it happened extremely fast, but it, it does appear that our changes have been saved. So now if I actually stop the app and restart it, we should see our, um, our bio was persisted. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Does it work? Oh, hey, I'm a sexy coder. Oh, and we get the sexy fade in on the avatar image. We did our job. 
So everything is looking good and we have our profile completely ready to go. So now that we're all done with our profile in the next video, we're going to actually start working on the social media feed, the core part of our app where we're going to be able to show images. So we're going to be working on the UI of our social media feed. We'll be able to uh, tab between the two different views, the, our profile and the user's profile, or our profile and the social media feed. And we're going to be building out all that UI in the next video. So thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to catch that video when it comes out on how to build out a social media feed, then make sure you subscribe. And if you have any other things that you want to see in this series, make sure you let me know. Maybe I can squeeze it in. Um, we're, we're coming down to the last couple of days here, but if it's something simple, then I might be able to get it in there. But thank you for your time. Go out there and keep coding passionately.